I'm Ken Mako from Forest Hill, Maryland, supporter of the Manchester United, prettier than Jack Grealish, and the official daddy of all Arsenal and Everton fans. And you are listening to the DU Football Show. Well, they were boisterous this weekend, weren't they? Yeah, uh, and their fans didn't seem even too tough with winning their first trophy in six years. Yeah, they were really fucking about it. uh, Fortunately, we're going to give it exactly the amount of time it deserves. Let's start the show. Born in the land of Bowie, Maryland. Bred to be a fan of fucking Everton. Punch you in the eye and drink your rye. Sam Houston. Arsenal fans have another Sam. Right, AA, the fucking Gooner Graham. Snow the Lord. Look straight in shorts. Sam Graham, hey. Sam Graham. Fucking United! Fucking United! Hello and welcome to the DU Football Show, a completely biased recap of the English Premier League is told by two common American schmucks. I am your host, Sam Houston, and across the way from me, send it with an autogram in his fucked up hair, Mr. Samuel Graham. Sammy, how you doing, buddy? Doing well. Uh, You know, uh, blow is the street word for cocaine, right? So if they made this underwater, it could be called blowfish. (sighs) You're really sticking to that one, aren't you? Me and Mel had a meeting while you were getting ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the meeting was yeah. for you to do that at injury time, not main show. Uh, I thought you said when they hit the ice break. Or ready at to come injury in. time. I thought you meant here. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash D football show to hear what the fuck we were talking about uh, in uh, the extra content. Want to tell your co-host he's done fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> do it with <laughs> I can't get out the Hey, take a look at America. You're fucked up. (laughs) We're recording at the DU Public House just outside the nation's capital. You can check us out on all podcast platforms. Please be sure to rate, subscribe, review, and share with a footballing friend. Should you want to chat with us, there is many ways that you can. Mr. Graham, tell the good people how they can get in touch. It's autogram.com. Uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> Say it with an autogram. Yeah. Houston, remember those listeners we just picked up? Yeah, they're all gone. I can hear them. If you want to win back your uh, <laughs> new listeners, say it with an autogram. Hey, open a podcast app. Push play. <laughs> it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's at do you football show on all the social media and do you football show at gmail.com to get in touch by email excellent excellent Thank and right. uh or as i like to say you got pto to burn you got <laughs> nothing else to do might as well get in your car and drive your happy ass over here got some zip car points <laughs> <laughs> Just as we got the our fuck up. got our goal our girl cole back Uh-oh. with us again hanging out is that a sore subject is your <laughs> car in the shop actually yes my car is in the shop and uh yeah um it's got some stuff that's really fucked up. Probably just going to be renting a car for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Upset but with your mechanic? <laughs> Say it with an autogram. <laughs> hey, fix my shit! <laughs> now, bitch! Oh God, uh, would you please? Like, yeah, I just... <laughs> and tell me the real price. Don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> Grab just something to the hood of your car. <laughs> Uh, hi, Cole. How you doing, darling? Hi, I'm doing good. I look like a woman. <laughs> we have been... <laughs> we, this, for, for those you don't know, we've been together now for about an hour and a half, and this has been yeah. the attitude since go. <laughs> so yeah. it's just... As much like bears, time. we all like cocaine, okay, yeah. too. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, but, but yeah, if you were the bear... Joke. You really like cocaine. See, you missed a key part there. You just said people like cocaine. Well, this bear really Really liked liked cocaine. Yeah, you're right. We just actually juggled around a blowfish. (laughs) (laughs) Or or, he was straight face. Or was it a puffer? (laughs) Or or, or was it a puffer? Sam and myself both work in the wine and spirit industry and both have a deep, passionate love for all things distilled spirits. So is the red-blooded Americans we are. We vow to have a drink in our hand throughout this show and every single show. Mr. Graham, we have cracked the top ten. We're Get into, into the top it. half of the table, something Chelsea knows nothing about. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Bazinga! That's a dig. <laughs> Somebody get the we haven't done that for a long time. Wow, that's a throwback. 
This is Nelson, Nelson Brothers Reserve. Uh, comes in at 53.9% by volume. If you are keeping track at home, that is 107.8 proof. Should run you about 60 bucks, of course. The list has been out now for a few months. Always tack on probably 10 to $15 minimum for that kind of stuff. But this is pretty readily available, I yeah, think. Yeah, very readily available. So the price really hasn't gone up on it. You can find this with relative yeah. ease. Uh, the panel rated it a 93. It is a bourbon whiskey. <clears throat> Excuse me. And your blurb comes to you courtesy of David Fleming from the Whiskey Epic Tasting Panel. Charlie and Andy Nelson resurrected the family company in 2009, a century after it, after it was shuttered by Tennessee's prohibition laws. Initial efforts focused on a second label, Bell Mead, which scored well. This year came the first releases bearing the family name on two bourbon, la uh, two bourbon labels, Nelson Brothers Classic and Reserve. Both have carried on the legacy admirably. This one packs a punch, but is soft and gentle at the same time, offering red berry and vanilla malt aromas and a palette of melted marshmallow, coconut, uh, sorry, coconut shavings and baked apple. Like all good whiskeys, it saves the best for last with a long, creamy finish of chocolate and spice. If you want to tell your partner she does the same thing, say it with an autogram. Hell yeah, you should. I like it. I think it's delicious. <laughs> I think the water really helped uh, getting it over ice. Um, it was a little hot for me at first, but I think it's delicious. Yeah, uh, well, even neat, it was a little hot. For 107, it drank a little bit more like a 118, like or a 120. It was a little hot. Uh, ice has helped it a lot, yeah. but it was good neat. It was very good neat. It's just it's exceptional with a little bit of a chill to it. This is just old school fuck you bourbon, man. Yeah, it's, it's just, just good bourbon. Yeah, yep. yeah. I enjoyed it neat. I, I thought it was freaking delicious. Uh, I uh, I know Charlie Nelson very well. Um, the uh, Dragon. The day that well, and took we took. Mel I know Charlie Nelson. <laughs> yeah, took that's Mel. Willie Mel. Took we took um, Mel and I were in Nashville. We swung by, saw the distillery, hung out with Andy and uh, Charlie. Was Jan with us? Uh, Jan did not come to the oh, distillery, okay. but <clears throat> when we when we uh, we went there, I worked with Charlie in the market. I want to say four different times while I was with uh, Bacchus when mm -hmm. I was the spirit specialist and we represented the Bell Mead line. He and I legitimately just sobbed on the phone together for 15 minutes the day Dave died. We just sat there and just cried. You know, it's, yeah. He called me so. and it was just like, what the fuck, man? And that's and we sat there, we drank whiskey, <coughs> we cried and we were like, neither one of us are going to remember tonight. Like It was just... He was, he's a good man. I love his brand. I love what they do. I know that they're moving away from Bell Mead as a line. They're going to really kind of embrace Greenbrier, Nelson's Greenbrier, and kind of really kind of focus on what it is they're currently doing. <clears throat> oh, they're but, still going to, they're not discontinuing right. Bell Mead. It's just or not going to be a focus. Okay. So they're going to continue to produce it. And yeah. They're just not coming out with new marks or <clears throat> right. fun finishes or right. any of that kind of stuff. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and really the idea is to move forward with. You know, they already did the Nelson's Green Buyer Tennessee Whiskey, which we had on the show, which was exceptional. And then also this, you know, this one as well, which is also exceptional. And we're already about half bottle and we're going to have to buy another bottle because she, she ain't making it through the night. I don't think probably not. <clears throat> That's quick turnaround by him. Uh, who who do we get there? Well, there's two developments during the first part of the show. First, Christian has got us on the big screen in his house so he oh. can work on dank memes during the show. <laughs> <laughs> but Taylor already sent me that one. Just for a few pennies more, you can send a singing autogram. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear Graham sing. <laughs> if you listening out there want to become part of the live show shenanigans, we do this every Monday on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, <laughs> Facebook group. Yeah, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are. Wherever you can, wherever you watch your videos. We're on YouTube as well. YouTube. Like, I was like, I one. knew I was forgetting one. I'm finding everything. I was running through everything in my head. I was like, no, she already said that. We're the not Twitch on that one. The Twitch and the Twitters. One. The Twitter <laughs> twitchings. <laughs> Isn't that what Elon Musk does now? Twitches with <laughs> yeah, his Twitter? Twitter? Oh, yeah. Twitter twitching. Mm -hmm. So universally. Have you paid our $8 yet? Or do we have a blue tick? 
We have to so pay one for Facebook so too. People, Facebook wants to charge us twelve soon. <laughs> what? Yep. So people believe us? Yeah. That we know what we're talking about? <laughs> uh huh. Well, he's got a blue tick, Sam. Oh yeah, that's, that's gonna that that <laughs> says everything. I'll just make you one in the graphics department, <laughs> and we'll just put it up there. It'll be fine. Uh, universally, this is a great fucking bourbon. It's not hard to yeah. find. Go find it. Buy this yeah, bottle. It's not going to cost you an arm and a leg, and you'll be very happy with it. That's very simple. Just like the uh, Nelson Greenbrier Tennessee whiskey, which is a little even less. I think it's like you know thirty five bucks at the most. Yeah, and that was absolutely stellar. So yeah, they're both very good whiskeys <laughs> for sure. This is this is just good fuck bourbon. Yeah, I and mean, that's just yeah. It's there's no kind of bells or whistles about it there's no like super special this is just a good fucking bourbon whiskey yeah precisely delicious. all right what else we gotta do mr grab always remember to juggle your blowfish responsibly <laughs> hey heard let's do this <laughs> <laughs> all the tapping all over Ooh. the place all the tapping i'm sorry grandma you want you... that for earth day i hit you in the <laughs> unch right there get you closer to tapping an autogram. Tell everybody this weekend's action was really fucking drab <laughs> with an autogram. <laughs> we start with the bottom of the table uh, as the teams just seem to be quit switching spots from week to week to week. Mm -hmm. Aston Villa 2, Everton nil, Leeds 1, Southampton nil, West Ham 4, Nottingham Forest nil. Oh, Sam, you forgot one here. Oh, who did I forget? Uh, Chelsea. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, by the way, I, I sometimes oh, like well. to give yeah, I sometimes like to give people a little insight into what injury time and some of the extra things they get with mm. their Patreon subscription. Mm. Yeah. So on Patreon, we always have side beers, right? Uh, we tell you on this show about the whiskey we're drinking because we are spirit based people for the most part. Um, but we always have side beers that we discuss on injury time, which is our preview show to the upcoming week. Right. Um, and five bucks a month, you get both of the extra shows. Soundcheck, which is pre-show, injury time, post-show, slash preview of the next week. But I like to theme my beer sometimes just based on names because I like all beer for the most part. Um, there's two or three types that I don't really care for. Uh, so I'll buy stuff based on name just to try something new and tie it into the show. Mm -hmm. And since I just mentioned Chelsea, this one's called 1-24, one which I think is the record for the last uh, 24 games in all competitions. <laughs> And it's got rainbows. So if you subscribe, you'll understand why that's funny and needs to be in this bit right now. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> Get in. Get that double hi-hat type on. right there. Very well done. <laughs> Love it. And uh, let's just start by saying this uh, is a shortened week. And there was only seven matches. I'm sorry, eight matches. Because the League Cup was decided this weekend between Newcastle and Manchester United. And... After six years, yay, Manchester United has won a fucking cup. Yes, they did. Uh, ultimately, I thought it was a good game, which a lot of cup finals are not. They tend to be pretty turgid, but I thought both teams had a go at each other. There were a few testy moments, um, but Manchester United were mainly uh, comfortable. I did like Joe Linton going fucking ham for a minute, though. Uh, that was pretty fun. Uh, we are already speaking enough about them than we need to. The Manx ran amok in the closed group oh, this fucking so weekend. so annoying. It was Ray wished Ole Gunnar Solskjaer a happy fucking birthday. happy birthday. <laughs> That's how fucking unbearable the fucking Manx were in our fucking group this weekend. <laughs> the minute they won, it was like, glory, glory, man, you died! I'm like, shut the fuck up. Dear sweet Jesus, you all just don't like want to, to remember that the, the, last, the last trophy you won was from Jose Mourinho, so you just want to forget that that ever fucking happened. That's what you're gunning yeah, for. for. For any other people that like to get stuck in and other kind of, you know, alpha banter talkers in the group, I, I would like to start a support group because now I know what SEALs feel like. Jesus. With the way these Manchester United fucking bands were acting this weekend. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Who's that? Christian already has his first one up. Uh, it says, little... always remember to juggle your blowfish responsibly. I was like, that was fast. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's just an otter head on my Out body. Standing. What? Uh, all, although we know Thank this you. was said while with uh, Tottenham, I think it applies here. Like we say in Portugal, bread is bread and cheese is cheese. Didn't bring to the game, not just the basics of football, I believe the basics of life. I feel you brought to the closed group, <laughs> not just the basics of shit talking, but the basics of life. I just have to say. And um, 
That's it. We're done talking about them. We talk about them every week, and I don't want to talk about them anymore. So we're done. That's hey, it. Thank congratulations. Fuck off. Well done. Um, fuck off now. <laughs> uh, Newcastle, you're heading in the right direction. Uh, I hate to compare you to Man City oil money, but your e- Man City that will be the case. They have oil death money. They haven't spent exorbitantly <laughs> yet. Really, I mean, especially when you look at what Chelsea's doing. Yeah. What Newcastle's doing has gone a little bit more under the radar because of it. Mm. But it's also not, you know, they're not blowing transfer records out of the water either. You know it's what I mean? Only a matter of time, of course. But you know, I I hope for their sake, for their club's sake, for their their fans' sake that that uh, <laughs> Eddie Howe looked at those boys in a dressing room and said, "Remember this feeling. Mm-hmm. You don't want to have this feeling again." Yeah. Next time, go win it. And then he opened his autogram. Do better, cuts. <laughs> Villa and Everton. This game is ultimately decided by that by that penalty. Because for the most part, if you're watch, watching the match, the opportunities were Everton's. They were very much Everton's. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, th- this this we just can't fucking score. There's a running theme this weekend, and this got kind of is going to get us going in the uh, for the storyline of, of pretty much the whole weekend. Is that everything was pretty statistically even. But everything was completely devoid of quality in the final third. Oh, it was just not. <laughs> I, I tell you, Everton had chance after chance after chance, and no one wanted to take a shot on goal. Like it would be like, oh, it landed on Dwight McNeil's right foot, so he has to put it on his left foot. You're a professional footballer. Use your other foot. Then Decorey, it was on his right foot. He, he was on his left foot. He needed it on his right foot. Just take a fucking chance. Like, Mopay, same thing. Like, just there were the so yeah, many opportunities ball. where it's like they needed to set it up perfectly. You're a professional footballer. Just yeah. fucking have a go. You can't score. Have a go. You can't score if you don't shoot the ball. FIFA are trying to implement a rule to stop goalkeepers from shithousing during penalties. Right. Mm. Emmy Martinez was asked about this post match when he was interviewed. Do you know what he said? Oh, what did he say? I've already saved the penalties I need to save. They could put in whatever rules they want. <laughs> <laughs> and the shithousery oh, continues. Fucking mic drop. <laughs> I did, when he said it, did he then like hump the air ferociously? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. like grabbing grab the imaginary question by the head? Oh, fuck them. <laughs> <And> just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my dear God! Yeah, this a- again. Villa very simply put took advantage of their opportunities, and when Diaz sec the second goal by that Buguia was good. That would piss Sean Dice the fuck off. I'm not even. I don't support you. Obviously, yeah. I don't root for y'all, and. That pissed me off. How easily Buendia just blew past Connor Cody. It was Piss absolutely poor defending. pitiful. It's so I don't want to get too deep into it, but one of in in the Everton <laughs> circles, one of the questions Embrace that's been going on runner. gets yes. stuck in. Right. Well, one of the one of the questions that's been going on is you have Yuri Mina on the bench. Yes, he's fucking healthy. Uh huh. Why is Connor Cody still out there? Because yeah, yeah, Mina may get hurt. But wouldn't you rather just put him out there and actually get hurt? Does Jerry mean to speak English yet? He's a better fucking defender. He's been there for four years. Does yes, he speak he does. English yet? Yes, he does. All right, then there's no reason. He's a you better see, fucking defender. Then he should be out there. He's a better defender. Because I can understand better if they defender. can't communicate. Right. You put in Connor Cody. He's a way better defender. <laughs> just like... Uh, and and then there's like a buy on clause for Cody at uh, like 4.5 million. And there's people going, oh, yeah, we should exercise that. 4.5 million for a 30 year old central defender. Are you fucking kidding me? No. You know no. Dice is doing it, right? Dice oh, is going to do God, that. I hope he doesn't, but he probably will. He will. Absolutely. Um, 100%. <clears throat> here's the big thing for Villa, the, the really big notable thing for Villa. Matty Cash started. He was finally fully healthy. Luca Dini is starting, finally fully hair, healthy. Uh, um, God, what? It's Bubakar Kamara started in midfield. Like, uh, McGinn finally back and playing regularly. They're getting healthy at the right time. This yeah. is very big mm-hmm. for them. And also, I mean, they just they have Everton's fucking number. Yeah. And Douglas Louise dyed his hair back blonde and there's no stopping him when he's blonde. You know the other Brazilians like that did that? Him. <laughs> you know I'm, I'm sorry With to take which it, body part? <laughs> I'm sorry to take it back to the Carlin Cup final. Or Carlin, that's an old reference. Yeah. The Carabao Cup final for a second. Did you notice Bruno Guimaraes and Joe Linton both had dyed blonde hair? Yeah. Tends to be a big Brazilian thing for whatever reason. 
super bleach blonde hair, but they also <laughs> put the black Newcastle stripes in a heart down kind of on the corner, like top of their neck behind their ear. Oh, yeah. Dyed into their hair. Oh, I didn't know That's that. Funny. Graham Sue Ness must have been losing his fucking mind. <laughs> 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 but yeah, that was so all three Brazilians uh, did that, you know. That, mm. that super bleach blonde dyed mm. hair look this weekend. And you're right about that. When Douglas Louise has the fresh hair do, mm-hmm. plays better. Plays better. <laughs> yeah. Plays he better. Does. Now, did, did this to me, this the John McGinn's proper return here mm-hmm. was kind of like when Kim Kardashian came back to Keeping Up with the Kardashians after that season she took off when her and Kanye were going through trouble. Mm-hmm. The best butt finally showed back up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, so uh, there was really nothing that happened and, uh, this weekend. I had to just try to manufacture a joke. I'm sorry, everyone. Y'all want to give really the credit sorry. to <laughs> Ollie Watkins and Buendia, and that's great. But uh, shout out to my man, Tyrone Mings. Okay. There was a spot where he saved a goal from going Oh, that's in. true. Yeah, he did clear a ball off the, off the line. line. Yeah, he did clear yeah. a ball off the line. Yeah, and that pick- would have been... Pickford and Emmy both had brilliant saves. Mm-hmm. Uh, Emmy in the first half on Jordan the header Pickford signed a new contract. Yes, he oh did. yeah, Emmy the first one. Who was even, uh, who was the stop against? Uh, that was oh, against nah, nah. Oh, nah, nah. Yep. What's my name? Yeah. He uh, <laughs> hey, so confident. Oh, nah, nah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, so confident in Everton staying up, Jordan Pickford's new contract that runs, I think, till twenty twenty seven does not have a sell on a mandatory sell clause for relegation. Yeah, that that was one of the big hang ups um, that uh, Everton, for the most part, is saying we're not doing that shit. That's you know, yeah, we're at the we're near the bottom right now. We're in trouble. We're not that kind of club. So sign a contract and you're with the club. And if we sell you on, we sell you on. But it's not a we have to sell you on. They're going to sell him uh, yeah. after oh, yeah. you get relegated because they'll need to pay for a season in the championship. Uh, if they don't get relegated, they're still selling them. You I think, think so. I think him and David Raya are the two most sought after keepers. And I think so. Which one ends up at Chelsea? Which one ends up at Manchester United? Yeah. <laughs> Those are I'm the only say, two places I'm going to say Raya ends up at United. You think Pickford yeah. goes to Chelsea? I think if Pickford goes to Chelsea or Pickford goes to Spurs because Spurs was another landed spot they've been talking about uh, yeah. as well. If he also wants to continue to not win trophies, that'd be a great idea. Yeah, that would be a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, apparently that was the best yeah. joke I've ever told. That was a great joke. Got me all there were, uh, That was like up. the summer of whooping cough in my family. Yeah. It was oh. not funny unless me and my brother almost died. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but <laughs> from coughing while laughing. Yeah. Here's the other thing. Don't look now. Uh, Villa is even on points with Chelsea. They're just behind him in goal differential. They've won, they've won more games in Chelsea. Yeah, exactly. At this stage so, of the season. Uh, here's to not scoring goals, even though getting tons of opportunities. Uh, so. The trademark of a Sean Dyche side. Yeah. Well, hey, we're... The uh, inchworm giveth, the inchworm taketh away. Hey, we're... we're uh, Oh, two and six against uh, Villa since they've gotten promoted. Woo. Yay. Good job. I can move that out of the way because nobody else has to do one. Yep. Even though the FAA did get back. <laughs> there was an illegal si- landing somewhere. And said because there oh, was no Harry interference in the airspace come down? <laughs> that she should have to do another <laughs> shot because of that. But we'll, we'll, we'll let that one slide. I just want to let it know the FAA did speak on what you had to say last that week. That was a big, big thing in the closed group it this was. weekend. A lot of people jumped on that. Russ has already started point. it again today. I love it. Uh, Garcia era has begun at Leeds, and it starts with a massive fucking win. I think it's Gracia. Gracia, sorry. Yeah, I think it, it's like, I think his name is Eric Thank You. <laughs> Heard. Pretty much. Heard, very good. Sans S, though. Uh, gr- big, big win. Big, big, big win for, for Leeds. You look less than impressed. Is that... Is that bad? They already look more. It was terrible. (laughs) They already look more organized. Yes. They already look more disciplined. They Mm -hmm. already just look better, Um, which is great. So we can hate them again. Right. (laughs) Uh, So Really, for defensively, for probably 18 months, this is the best that they've looked. Um, That being said, Southampton did have a few chances and refused to take any of them. Um, I think they fell to the wrong people in some cases. Yeah. Uh, but there's still some positivity surrounding Southampton in the way they're playing at the moment. I don't think they're going to have enough to get over the line. Personally, I th- I, I I think I they're pretty. I think they're pretty nailed on going down, despite their performances being a bit better. 
Well, and that's what I was about to say. They're running out of chances yeah. is essentially what it comes down to. They're yeah, just running much. out of chances. And at some point soon, they're going to have one of those tough runs where they play like United, Arsenal, and then Tottenham in three games mm-hmm. in a row. And they're just going to dig themselves a bigger hole because you guys look better. <laughs> Leeds now looking better. I, uh, I I worry for Southampton big time here. Yeah, agreed. Would you say it's a culture change at uh, Leeds? It felt like an automatic culture change. It did. Uh, the Americans didn't try to fight anybody. That mm-hmm. was good. That was nice. Um, yeah, but th- no, they controlled the ball. They controlled. Every- they looked disciplined and ready to go. And much like you guys, that's after what, four training sessions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the way that you guys looked against us that that first game out under dice right. looked disciplined. He, you had what, six training sessions, maybe. Mm-hmm. This is the immediate impact that these these managers have, especially these kind of you know these tech task managers these these guys that just this is your fucking job go do your job and if you do your job we'll win there's no qualms there's no bells and whistles there's no sparklers there's no grand finale yeah just go do it's a just a well-oiled machine and Uh, just dumb things like come out onto the training ground it's like uh where's your shin guards and your socks oh the last coach didn't make us well you're not prepared to play fucking football then Go inside right. and fucking get dressed. Well, that's it. You, you know, practice like you play, right? Run so your you, ass into the ground. It's like, oh, you had it easy with the last guy. Well, you know what? Somebody needs to kick you in the ass. And that's what it definitely felt like for Leeds is that it's just somebody who kicked him in the fucking ass. I am proud to say that Javi Garcia, or Gracia rather, <laughs> excuse me, was the um, the very first uh, patron of autograms. <laughs> 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 now that was a good one <laughs> very well done uh irons get a ton of goals including a danny Ings brace i get worried that they just blew their load because they don't yeah. score a ton of goals no they don't they do not. um so uh did you hear the post match here Mm-mm. this was also quite funny david Moyes said something like i don't you know get too up or too down about any one particular result but this was a good result and um I don't really see any reason why I can't have a glass of wine tonight. Do you? Was, <laughs> the reporter was like, I mean, I guess not. <laughs> like the record, the reporter was kind of dumbfounded. Fairy man going to do what the fairy man want, man. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's how he rolls. He's wine of, is for winners. Yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's of a certain age and Glaswegian. No one's going to tell him to stop, number one. Yeah, no. Number two, despite how rich he is, he's Glaswegian. We all know what that is. Right. That's a big glass of Bucky, isn't it? Yeah, a big old glass of the Bucky. <laughs> it's a wine, and it's a caffeinated wine. That's the important thing to know. Flavored by, malt beverage. And it's, it's made by monks. It's made by monks, so you know it's got to be good. Well, it's also going to bring good fortunes and the blessing of the Lord down upon us. <laughs> <laughs> Much like it has the city of Glasgow over the last 500 years. Uh, don't, look, right. don't look now, yeah, Forrest. Right. Don't look now, Forrest. You're four points from the drop. You're not mm-hmm. that far off from the drop, and a couple of bad results can find you in a bad way very, very quickly, and your goal differential is horrific. It's terrible. And this didn't help. Um, I want to bring something else funny to the table. Another post-match situation. Steve Cooper, notable alien, said, <laughs> said <laughs> um, you know, the boys have to, have to realize what they've done today. We're going to have to have a grown-up conversation. About everything that happened. That sparked something in my head. Okay. Would you or would you not want Steve Cooper to teach you about the birds and the bees? Because <laughs> that's what it sounded like and it made me terribly uncomfortable. I don't want somebody that is not of this world to be teaching me about the birds and the bees. Yeah, no, I don't want that at all. Specifically because I'm not gay. I don't care if you are or if the bees are. Check sound check for that one. <laughs> Sam's very proud of that joke. And Mel's not listening. Sometimes he laughs to himself. He, right now he's laughing to himself. Sometimes I just do stuff for me, and that one was for me. I still don't want to learn anything from Steve Cooper about sex. Do you want to learn something about jokes? The best way to send it, send it with an autogram. Just take your pants off and get to fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Running out the rest of the league in oh, so that happened. I turned pages before this I. This what happens when I tell you guys we got a big audience bump. Like great, let's fuck it off. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. This is good. This is better than the better jokes than the last week. The league gave us nothing to talk yeah, about. Yeah, it's true. <laughs>
Fulham 1, Wolverhampton 1, <laughs> Arsenal 1, Leicester City 0, Manchester City 4, Bournemouth 1, Crystal Palace 0, Liverpool 0, Tottenham 2, Chelsea 0. A uh, great home point for the Wolves. Like the, every Definitely. match, and this is you. This is another one, just like the Leeds and you guys. Lopetegui's made a world of fucking difference the moment he walked through the door. Yeah, and, and they're still they're still in trouble. They're not out of it, but little points like this are important. And holding serve in your building is very important. A hundred percent. And they, I mean, they had the better chances in the game. Really, Wolves yeah. did. Well, it took um, a worldly by Jedi. I thought they were excellent. Yeah. Definitely. I that goal from Rob. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Fucking fantastic. I thought that I thought they were great wolves uh in the in the game, really. And excuse me. Um in terms of the football back and forth, I think this was probably the best game of the weekend. Both teams had chances here. Yeah, I would agree. Really? I would agree. I think Wolves were the better team, but both teams had opportunities. Yeah, because the rest of the weekend sucked. It was, it was terrible. I mean, that's why you're getting a lot of real <laughs> cheesy shit mm-hmm. and a lot of stuff from our, our, our from Soundcheck. Yeah. Because there isn't really mm-hmm. much to talk about. Not a very good game. Um, yeah, it's, sometimes <laughs> the league does this to us, and we do our best to figure it out. Speaking of which, none better of an example than Arsenal versus Leicester. It was all one-way traffic, but devoid of any real quality. Yeah. It looked like a training session. And yeah. I don't want to watch that. It sucks. I think the Trossard goal, I, it's a little iffy on if Ben White was interfering in the uh, in the offsides. I don't know. Like, eh. I think it's questionable. I think it's ridiculous that the referee overturned that. Uh, I think um, Doug initiated that contact uh, with Ben White. Ben White maybe held him a little bit, but I also don't think he impeded him at all. Right. Um, He chose to flap at it with his left hand for no reason. The ball was already passed him before he jumped. And what Ben White was doing had no effect on that. Uh, It was a little bit ridiculous. The best moment of the This is how bad the game was. The best moment of the game for the neutral was Troussard's disallowed goal. Right, yeah. The best moment of the game for Arsenal supporters was a kind of nostalgic uh, Gabriel Martinelli uh, looking like Thierry Henry the way he just rolled the ball to the far corner. Right. Um, but nobody else is going to... I mean, a lot of people will remember it. Nobody else is going to care about it like we do. And it was actually quite frustrating. It really? Was, it was... I mean, th- this was like the epitome of, of blue balls. Hey, it's, look, this it's is kind of why people don't like soccer, is three. you could be dominant for so long and not fucking score. Right. But for you, get you, mad about it. you get the win. And even more importantly, the, the story off the field is really the big part. Uh, Bakoya Saka gets signed to a uh, new deal. Yes. Huge. Typically, Massive. Arsenal loses young talent to big teams because they don't step up and pay them. Arsenal has, Arsenal has gone, you're our highest paid player. This but they is also what we didn't do the you. dumb shit and pay somebody 325 a week, so they right. fuck off and don't do anything. Right. Um, I think, But, it, you know, he's one of our own. Coming through Hale End, he's going to be, you know, the face of the club for the next, and, and rightly so, and, and very, you know, very welcome from, from us supporters. Um, he's going to be the face of the club for the next, you know, Six, seven, five, six years, I think it is. I think yeah. it was a five year deal, but um, I, I don't, you know, unless things sour for whatever reason, I don't see him going anywhere. He's an excellent player. He's got a good head on his shoulders. He's a good lad. Uh, after, you know, we, we spoke about it at Nauseam, what happened after the Euros to Rashford, Sancho, and um, and uh, Saka uh, with the abuse that they, they took uh, after missing their penalties in the, in the uh, European Championship final. Mm-hmm. Um, and all three of them now Rashford and Sancho Sancho especially uh took it took it very hard Rashford looked well off the pace for a while but Ten Hag has sorted him out a bit and kind of what Ten Hag has done at Manchester United was Saka didn't need that time for whatever reason the other two did but they were open about their experience. They were open about what was happening to them. And they went to the manager and said, I'd like a little bit of time off. Basically, I need yeah. to get my head right after yeah. what was going on. He gave it to them. And Rashford has already surpassed his single season record, his personal single season record of gold. Yeah. And this is after all the work he did during COVID and after COVID um, with feeding needy school children uh, that the Tory government wouldn't right. do. Right. Uh, until he brought it to light and all three of them now kind of do the same celebration with the just keep your mind right right yep always um, point to their head and Jaden sancho recently three games ago i think it was just came back from 
you know, two, three months essentially out of the team to get his mind right. And Eric Ten Hag afforded them that opportunity. Yeah. And they both of them have grasped it. Saka didn't need that. He's just continued his meteoric rise, which is good on him. Shows, you know, his his kind of you know, steel that he's got within him, which is a good sign. Not that, you know, needing help is weak or anything. And it's important that people talk about sports people needing help because they're seen as the epitome of man and all that kind of crap. I, I'm just really proud of him. Really proud of all three of them. They're just they're excellent. Got to feel excellent. proud for the club, too, because they're not letting one get away. Yeah. Which they often and, and that, and that's always massive. let one yeah, get away. For sure. We, we would always, you know, Arsene Wenger had an economic degree, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever we needed to pay for something, he would sell a player to make sure we had that budget. Right. Precisely. Um, because, also partially because the Cronkies wouldn't fund that move. Now, for whatever reason, they are funding those moves, which is welcome. Fucking training session for City against Bournemouth yeah it was about the same thing as our game they just are better at finishing than we are yeah I mean <laughs> credit to Bournemouth for sticking around getting a goal and being a little plucky no, fuck but Bournemouth for getting a goal they cost me 173 US <laughs> American dollars okay yeah, I had a five dollar I had a five dollar bet that had an eight-way parlay <laughs> in it and the only thing I needed was City to win to nil to finish that bet, I had goal scores. Nine way parlay. I had goal scores. I had assist makers. I had money lines. I had spreads all throughout this bet. And I needed City to win to nil. And in the 83rd minute, Lerma figured out the way he was going and put it in the other opponent's net for a change because he's normally not good, good gambling and fucking ruined it. Terrible with money. Okay. Whiskey, I think, covered it all right there, pretty much. Terrible with money. Yeah, I right. like how Sam's holding the unt glass, just mm -hmm. kind of looking at me, doing the side eye. Mm -hmm. Well, just maybe bet better, Sam. Much like you, you know, bet and aren't how about normal. Just do segment. your job better. You can let somebody that needs to know how to do their job better to do so with an autogram. Heard. <laughs> the Cherries now have eight matches at home. Six of them are against the top half of the table. This is going to be very, very tough for them. Oh, yeah. I fear for them. They're going back down. I think it is kind of without question. Personally. And then if there was a drab match, a really, truly drab match, fucking Palace and Liverpool. Oh, my God. Was that turgid? You're sharing this, <laughs> was, by the way. Yeah, no problem. Share that with your husband, please. <laughs> Just. God. That was fucking awful. atrocious. This weekend was probably the worst advert for the Premier League. And according to Mel, this show is the worst advert for us. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah. Uh, Liverpool needed to continue the momentum because the next match is United. Yes. And if they're going to be in the discussion for Champions League, they need to beat United. This match well, did not say they're going to. Beat no, but it's it's points on the board again, right? I mean, people are dropping <sighs> points that they don't expect left, right, and center. Look at City against Forest a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago. Look at um, you against Villa, really, with the way the game mm -hmm. played out. I mean, people are dropping points they shouldn't drop all over the gaff. So points on the board you is better than... You against us. Okay. Yeah. like to remind you of that. Points on the board... Or Brentford. Yeah. Are better... <laughs> are better... That's a VAR <laughs> issue. Points on the board are better than no points on the board. And they're continuing to gather points. And that can only mean one thing, and that's them moving up, in my opinion. One thing that is positive. They still don't look like themselves. They need a complete refresh in midfield. They have a lot of problems, Liverpool do, but they're starting to figure it out where I don't trust Tottenham, for instance, next mm. week to go out and win. Right, true. J uh, Jada is starting to show his feet him, again. Him He's, coming back is huge for them. Yeah. Finding his feet again is massive for them. And, and it felt like this match was the... Really, it felt like, okay, Jada, get out there and, and find your feet again. Did Nothing else really matters. Like, just get out there and do what you can. And he had a couple of good rips, but ultimately it just, it, the match was never really going nowhere. And it really didn't feel like uh, Liverpool was uh, ruthless. Just get out there and see. <laughs> nothing really matters. <laughs> it's Palace and Liverpool. Oh, <laughs> nothing God. really you matters. But Jada. <laughs> <laughs> doom, doom, yeah. doom, doom. 
Anywhere, Anywhere the, the wind blows. Because, <laughs> well, you know, Klopp has a thing with the wind. <laughs> he also has a thing with his teeth. There's a lot of things between him, Queen. Oh, my God. Get Jurgen Klopp, Freddie Mercury, and some bees together, and you got yourself a motherfucking party. Yeah, you're Fell, it was windy like crazy. People love when I talk about the wind, but it was windy, and it's not good for football. And so we had, we had really to, to work hard. <laughs> you know, really work hard because it was windy. Of course. Uh, Tottenham completely dominate Chelsea. We just had a really difficult time because most of my players like cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> we played Brighton Hove and Albion. It was too many teams for us. How, how can we do better? Uh, like I said, Tottenham completely dominate Chelsea. Yeah, it was the first half, though, was some of the worst fucking football I've ever seen in my life. I was looking more forward to the MLS that afternoon than I was like 15 (laughs) minutes into this game watching the rest of it. It was fucking pitiful. It really was. God, it was this game. You know, really frustrates me is Sergio (laughs) Romero. Mm -hmm. He is such a good defender, but he is such a prick. Oh, God. Yeah. Stop diving. Stop doing this, that, the other. It's ridiculous. Uh, Also, question. Um. Why did uh, uh, Hakim Ziyech not get sent off? I, if if someone could barely put heads to heads and barely nudge their head forward, and that is a red card, how is a smack to the face not a fucking red card? I mean, card? he smacked Emerson Royale like he didn't bring in his keep from the corner. Yeah, exactly. That <laughs> evening. You know what I'm saying? He smacked him like he owed him money. Like, and it just Wayne wasn't... Brady going to have to choke a bitch? That's how he's back. <laughs> yeah, <them. laughs> exactly. I mean, he looked like a queen and Emerson Royale was his drone. <laughs> Where's my pollen? Where's my pollen? Get it for me. <laughs> drones can't do pollen. You taught me that. Yeah. Those would be bee drones, not the kind that like fly around and drop bombs. <laughs> or the ones that fly around to stop football matches. Hey! <laughs> and confuse other brummies, because apparently that whole population is about as smart as Jack Grealish. <laughs> <laughs> is that the first one or is that the police one? <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, Ali Skip, stand up and be counted. Oh, Remember, that was a great Great hit. to remind Antonio Conte you're actually a part of the team. Because I'm sure when he was sitting at home recovering from that surgery he had three weeks ago. Who's that lad? By the way, I don't think he's still recovering. I think they asked him not to come back. Because <laughs> they're winning. Tottenham's playing better. Because they're winning games. Correct. And the surgery is used as an excuse to keep him away because he is too fucking intense to stay away on his own. And he doesn't strike me as the type to listen to a doctor. But that's just me. Uh, except his hair transplant doctor. He listened to that guy. T- 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 fucking letter of the law. <laughs> the letter of the law. Because that thing is held on brilliantly. Uh, but no, I'm sure he was sitting at home going, who's that? <laughs> Turning out for, for my club. Uh, and then he strikes that ball. And now he's going to start every game for the rest of the season. Oh, yeah, definitely will. Uh, you know what? It's not pretty. And they did have that massive blunder against Leicester. Spurs are finding a way, man. Uh, they, they really are. are. Well, it, the, the, Tottenham, or, um, I'm sorry, Chelsea didn't help themselves. And I, I, this is solely on Graham Potter, in my opinion. Um, the second goal, especially, uh, if you set up your team to have Raheem Sterling marking Harry Kane on a set piece, like, you're you out doing? of your depth. You don't know what you're doing. Yeah, what are you doing? What are you doing? Raheem Sterling is about five foot seven. Yeah. And Harry Kane is about six foot three. Right. What are you doing? And then also when he breathes from his mouth, it lifts him a little bit higher from the ground. Correct. Too. And I'm sure he farts a lot, too. He just strikes me <laughs> as a guy that farts a lot. I don't know why, but he does. <laughs> but why would Raheem Sterling be marking Harry Kane mm-hmm. in the first place? He's also not a defender. Yeah. So why would you have a defender marking arguably the best striker, the be- the most complete striker in England mm-hmm. um, at, at the present moment? doesn't make any sense. Sergio Romero should be marking him. Right. Emerson Royale should be marking him. Right. Somebody that goes against him every fucking minute of the game at every other point in the game besides set pieces. Right. That's a managerial mistake. That is Graham, a failure of Graham Potter. Yeah, very true. And it's going to... You know, there's going to be questions asked of him. And and again, we've said it time and time again. I don't know anything other about the bullies other than the Dodgers. And they stuck with that dude when they were shit, too. But they got to do something here, man, because Chelsea look there. 
literally have scored the least amount of goals in fucking England in mm-hmm. all of league football. They have scored the least amount of goals since the start of November. Yeah. They've scored six fucking goals in four months. Yeah. It's terrible. Six goals in four months. It's pitiful. It's relegation form. It's terrible. I just want to say, if I was Harry Kane, I'd want to be covered by Sergio Romero or uh, Edison Royale, too, because, you know, they're my teammates. God damn it. (laughs) You know what? It's not often I put my foot in my mouth, but sometimes I do. (laughs) I met Reese James Uh or Uh, Kula Bali, who was not on the field, which I realized. Yeah, that's that an sucks. FAA violation I'm, right there. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna fucking. <laughs> that's definitely an FAA yeah. violation. No I'm doubt gonna, about it. I'm definitely gonna not live that one down for a long time. You, one time, the first time this ever happened to me, I I'm very careful what I say because I know because I make fun of people a lot and never uh, let them forget the dumb shit that they say. And I one time a long time ago uh, said that I think I was drunk that we should all we should get my friendship group uh, of my peers actually not you old fucks. Uh, but I said something to the effect of we should open a 23-hour subway. I meant 24-hour subway because it's the only fast food restaurant that's not open 24 hours. But I said we should open a 23-hour subway. Just misspoke. Simply misspoke. And I realized what I said, and I kind of sank in my seat for a second. I was like, I don't think anybody heard me. And then um, about five minutes passes, and somebody finally turns and goes, we just clean in for that hour? or?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, fuck! And for seven years, they made fun of me for that. <laughs> Want to tell your co-host he fucked off? <laughs> Say it with an autogram. Hey, look at America. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, since we have Cole here with us and there was uh, last time we were on, we didn't get to kind of cover everything that we wanted to. We just had a lot going on, a lot of games. Kind of want to do uh, chat a little bit with you. And there was something you wanted to bring up the last time you were here. Kind of want to open up the floor to you as you're talking about, you know, how you've been approaching selecting your team and and your thought process and your um your your seriousness behind it i do take it seriously just number one because you guys are a part of the pod and you do this wonderful show um but because there's a lot of chatter in the group Mm -hmm. um and all of my prior football experience was american football Mm -hmm. um and i dedicated a lot of time and energy to memorizing stats and watching games and all of that for that so in my exploration of the other football i wanted to treat it equally as seriously and i didn't want to take it for granted that oh yeah i can just you know watch this game that i used to play when i was a youngster and Mm -hmm. you know blah 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 um so i did take a long hard look at the history of the clubs um when i was making the decision to kind of narrow it down to the top two um but also i have a bias towards the top two and Mm -hmm. it is that they are are both supported by female supporters that are part of the group (laughs) very cool that makes perfect sense that's that's perfectly fair Mm -hmm. yeah very cool very cool now uh, obviously that leads me into the next question here was gonna say tell tell me a little bit about the people you've chatted with obviously one is directly across the table from you right here as far as villa goes i wouldn't uh, call that so much chatting as i would call it and people in the football world will know this term tapping up (laughs) <laughs> I think she kind of overstepped mm-hmm. her bounds in the affections of our sweet Nicole here. I don't That's think it's fair. That's that pro-Arsenal agenda for those of y'all who are just <laughs> new to the show yeah. and you're not really sure what that meant. Um, <laughs> this is it. You're hearing it. For Very the good. Time. I have it's a great no example. idea Thank you what so much you're for... talking about. I mean, yeah. uh, hey, Cole. Yeah. Last time you were on here, he uh, mentioned about inviting you up to the Abbey. Has that happened yet? No. I was actually just about to look at the schedule, number one. Number two, as So only when she's here do you think of her. As an early middle-aged white man, uh, what I'm hearing is is that representation is important to you. What Mm. I'm not getting is the feeling that that's really important at all. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, that's usually an injury time trope also. Yes. Sorry, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Five bucks 
a month, you get to hear all of our country opinions. Uh, uh, also, <laughs> Lindsay has been uh, mm-hmm. chatting with you mm-hmm. as well about uh, Villa 2, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, and, you know, way, way back when you did kind of the um, preview and all of the um, supporters ran through, you know, their teams and, you know, what they found to be important to them about each of them. She was the one who gave the spiel about Villa. And, you know, from that just little snippet and the passion that she brought through in that mm-hmm. moment, I was like, okay, yeah, I can see myself yep. and, going for this team. And she had no idea that we were doing this bit at all. Very good. That's true. She did not know. That was actually yeah. genuine. Well, same thing with our uh, our Aussie friend, uh, yes, Jane from uh, for for Brentford yeah. as well. Had no Definitely. idea. Uh, have it's you been hard able to, to compete chat? against Jane. Have you been able to chat with her at all and stuff like that? I no. I will admit I haven't. The mm-hmm. one thing that I have been active with for Brentford is the Brentford USA on Twitter. Okay, very um, good. And they have a very active uh, Twitter following supporter group. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, it's, that's. Been a lot of fun. <laughs> the Very problem cool. with Jane's the time difference is a son yeah, of a bitch in it. There's, there's a huge <laughs> thirteen time hours difference. or something. <laughs> well, <laughs> what we honestly need to be concerned about is that eventually she might get stung by the bee, and then envenomation takes over, and there's no saving her after that. <laughs> then we're just done. Well, you just know, done. You know the easiest way to communicate with people across time zones? How? With an autogram. <laughs> <laughs> You got, you got to do the yell your greetings at your friends. <laughs> By the way, there Same may with an autograph. or may not have been bets going on whether or not you'd stumble upon a Harry Otter or Graham Otter. Mm-hmm. But you just left them both mean? alone. I don't understand what that means. Graham Potter. Oh, nah, it's all Harry Potter jokes there. Yeah, I heard. No, no and then Otter. It could be Harry Otter. Nope. Mm. See, oh, both those you didn't Harry get. Harry Otter. As you can see, otters are already Harry. Mm-hmm. Uh, real. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, actually, yeah. speaking of Harry Potter, did anybody see uh, Dayan Kulisevsky's little trip to the Harry Potter Museum slash yes. the uh, King's Cross train station? Oh, the yes, 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 nine yes. Three quarters yes. To, to troll and Potter. Like, and yeah. standing next to a photo of a chi- of himself as a child. Yes. Since I, he's a ginger lad. Yes. Uh, and it was him and Ron Weasley. That yeah. was a, totes adorbs. Uh, <laughs> so as we're going towards the end of the season, um, What's the process for the approach with these two teams? Or is it just continue to watch games, talk with uh, support- supporters? Maybe kind of let us in on that. So uh, I do want to... Um, Come to the Abbey. No. <laughs> well, I mean, I do. I do want to go to the Abbey, and, and I do want <laughs> that feeling of like being in the pub and enjoying... Sunday the, Sunday the 9th. Sunday the 9th. It'll okay. be packed. Arsenal, okay. Liverpool, and it's 11.30, so you can make your way from D.C. easier. Excellent. Yeah, that'll be yeah, awesome. Sunday the okay. 9th. But yeah, like, I have enjoyed going to... <laughs> Sorry, I, got I have enjoyed watching matches with Mel, um, and I have just enjoyed watching Brentford just in general. Mm-hmm. Um, who doesn't enjoy <laughs> watching Tyrone Mings? I mean, I'm like, now pound, you have... Pound for pound, Villa's got all the ass and I'm meat. just saying, and now they've got that cute little Ollie Watkins just to oh, round it out. Ollie Watkins with the dimples. He's and, so cute. And he's now, he is now five for five. Five goals yes. in the past five games. Yes. Yes. Listen, Leonardo make... and DiCaprio, can you guys calm yourselves <laughs> down, please? It's going to make Ollie it Ollie Watkins super... is a sweet boy and you leave him alone. He is a sweet boy. <laughs> I, do, I called him cute. Yeah. They... You know, I, I have not had to make the tough, hard decision of deciding which team to watch yet, because the weekends when they were both playing, I would just be like, OK, I'm just going to watch Palace or, mm-hmm. you know, uh, or um, Crystal Palace or I'm just going to watch um, Nottingham Forest or, you know, one of the other teams. And I will watch both of those teams on replay. And even this past week. It was Villa, but there was no Brentford game. Right. So I haven't had to make that hard choice yet. I'm going to base part of my decision on where I fall in uh, that. I, yeah. I said it a few weeks back. It bears repeating that Palace was playing their bitter rival. Mm-hmm. You chose to watch mm-hmm. Brentford versus Arsenal. I did. That mm-hmm. told you all you needed to know. It did. You know, Absolutely. that tells you, oh, this is the team I clearly have more interest in. Yeah. Especially yeah. considering 
that was Palace's be all end all game of the season. That's their hot shit mm-hmm. match. And you were like, eh, I'd rather watch Brentford. Like that says all you need to know. Do you know do. what my ace in the hole is? What's your ace in the hole? Simon. <laughs> Oh, oh, he thinks yeah. so. He's a charming motherfucker. Just, you know what? And and yeah, that's swoop another in at thing. the eleventh hour. Yes, uh-huh. I do a, believe that's I can absolutely do that. what I'm also basing part of my decision on at this point is I I went through and I wrote down all the notes about the history of both clubs. I'm also going through and looking at what the clubs <laughs> are doing in their respective communities mm-hmm. and the charitable work. Arsenal that does they're a ton. Doing. I know they do, and and Simon. Yep was is a so good and yep. like just promoting that part of and and arsenal club. also just just saying arsenal were also known for one being of the being the, one of the first clubs to embrace black players which is uh, why last week was so or two weeks ago was so disappointing against brentford and some of the supportership uh doing what they did but also you mean you can't sell brentford short they absolutely were like you know what we've done it before and we've got a guy already mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. getting sentenced for for this kind of ass hattery. Yeah. Think we won't support our players. Think we 100%. won't do it again. Yeah, yeah. We absolutely no, fucking Brentford, will. And so yeah, Brentford they, deserved they immense right credit. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Uh, just to let you know, my my team does have a female COO. We do a ton well, what's of that work. Title? In the what's the third O for? COO? Uh, <laughs> our our team does a ton of work in the community, and I would like to repeat what I told you a couple of weeks ago. Stay as far fucking away from Everton as humanly possible. You do not want this kind of hell. You don't want it. You do not want it. Okay, I'm back now. <laughs> Final question for you, and then we're going to uh, get on into the betting segment. Is How have you enjoyed your first full season of the Prem? You know, you don't have a team yet. You're just kind of taking in this sport this league and everything around it what do you think so far so far you know i it took me a while to kind of get all the way there now i think i i've got the bug i'm i'm you know i'm watching the um women's national team matches because those are on hbo (laughs) max Mm -hmm. yep yep um i'm you know, watching they were on um, terrestrial cable this week yes. with yep. uh, the She Believes Cup, yep. yes. which has been brilliant to uh, to be able to tune into that live. Mm-hmm. I love watching their games. Mm-hmm. I uh, love watching their games. Smokey just wants to throw in a little bit about his team. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, for fuck's sake! You don't want to be a West Ham fan. <laughs> their <laughs> their club song, <laughs> their club song, <laughs> is forever blowing bubbles, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the main lines in the song is <laughs> "Fortune's always hiding." I've looked everywhere. They can't find fortune. It's terrible. Uh, okay. Smokey says, our "Like my dreams, they fade and die." Oh, so you just grim. Our club has a female president. Our club has a female presence on the board. Plus, we made our money from dildos. <laughs> oh, 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 the dildo oh, oh, brothers that's true yeah. the dildo brothers okay oh, so <laughs> i'm gonna take a harder look at that one <laughs> they, and they also have my danny ing so they, oh yeah they that's did, right they did sponsor bill kenwright's version of cats yeah exactly <laughs> as well <laughs> with their giant pink dildos Ooh, that's not a musical you can do otters <laughs> all right so cole you need to be ready early may is when you're going to mm-hmm. have to come to a decision because yeah. we're not going to do it the last show no. of the season because no. that's going to be us needing to wrap up, up the up season. A bunch of shit. Yep. You know, and, and also and it's going to—I feel like it's going to be too stressful for me. Also, God <laughs> forbid that fucker wins the league. I'm barely going to be able to sit in this studio with his fucking ego. There's no I'm way you're going to be able to. No, I'm, I'm not going to be that way. way. He's going to fucking. Sob. I'm not going to be that way. Over under right now on how many times he starts to cry. Uh, we're going to set the number at three. Uh, yeah. Strong yeah, over. No, I, Strong I'm, over. I'm going with at least five. Yeah. It depends. At what point does he start talking about how his kids are watching the game with him? Oh, oh yeah. no, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Are you going to, oh, are we counting this as start and stop? Or are we counting, because I can tell you it's going to be a hard under. I'll be sobbing the entire time. <laughs> I will cry once for probably an hour and 30 minutes, which is about how long the show runs. So, Cole, no, either the third to final week of the season or the second final week of the season. Okay. You'll be back in here and it'll be time to make that decision. Okay. Yep. Excited? I am a little bit. The Monday, you know what? You know what I'm going to say right now? What we're going to do is uh, you're coming back in on Monday, April 10th, if you can swing it. 
Okay. I will see. I will check. The Talk calendars. about your experience at the pub with me watching Arsenal v. Liverpool. Yeah. Okay. Seeing Simon <laughs> in all of his glory. Mike in all of uh-huh. his glory. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> It's always about that pro hey, Arsenal hey. agenda. Oh, we so may have had we may have the league wrapped up by then. Sure money. What I don't have wrapped up is our betting. I am down twenty four hundred American dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was Australian dollars, because then it would at least be twenty two seventy five. Yeah. But it's not. <laughs> it's twenty four hundred and that's a pain in my ass. Uh, Sammy, what is going on with you, my friend? Well, uh, Fulham drew because I gave them the big bump last week and talked about how fucking great mm-hmm. they were, and they went ahead and drew. So I'm now down $1,568. Big Sam's Rock of the hey, Week. That was well done with the way you pushed the buttons there and made it all sound legit. 50% of the time, we get the production right 100% of the time, or... Nine point zero nine zero nine zero nine zero nine percent of the time works a hundred percent of the time, baby. You know what? In in German, uh huh. That's just zero 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 zero. <laughs> Heard very good. Nine nine nine. <laughs> that's how many bets I've gotten correct this year. I I have to take Jeez. some kind of a parlay because I just can't pick a straight like. Maybe I win a hundred bucks. Like that's not going to chip away at all. Oh, so Sammy's dipping his leg, his toes in the parlay game. Uh, I've been, well, I've been doing it all season. <laughs> I'm losing miserably. I'm taking a parlay on one match. Oh, okay. Same gamer. United to beat Liverpool and both teams to score at plus three seventy. Okay. I think United. I actually is, don't mind that. United's playing great ball, and I think this is at least a two to one match. I uh, think it's absolutely a two to one match. Am I the only one that teared up when Harry Kane lifted a trophy a little bit for everything he's been through? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he points himself into the starting lineup this weekend? Yeah. I just I'm amazed he didn't lift up the trophy, then hold it down and go <laughs> and point right at it. Just <laughs> just for everybody to see. Oh fucking so, yeah, brilliant. That's what I'm going with. Plus three seventy. All right. Fair enough. And now it's time for our degenerate gambling friend, Pat's Pick It Away. Our friend has gone to sleep. Thank God for email, because I got one. Dfocalshow at gmail.com <laughs> if you'd like to get in touch. Uh, well, I did not hit again last week, missing two out of four of my four-way parlay. Uh, that's actually not bad. 50%, you'd be like, okay, that's pretty good, except for if it's on one bet, that don't pay no money. Yeah, I, I had 50% of mine. I picked one right and one wrong. Yep, I had eight out of nine on three different bets this weekend. It don't pay no monies. Nope. Uh, I'm driving back from Myrtle Beach from my annual winter golf trip, so sorry I cannot join you all tonight. So this week, I'm going to put a three-game parlay together with three big, big favorite. First, I'll take Arsenal over Everton, Liverpool over Wolves uh, in the Wednesday matchups, and then I'll go to the weekend where City over Newcastle on Saturday morning. I'm going to risk $500... <laughs> He's going for broke. To win 950, so I hope these favorites hit and make a dent in the crater-sized hole that I've dug myself. You guys have got a great week. Uh, You guys have a great week, sorry. And we'll talk to you next Monday. Lovely, lovely. Drive home safely, my friend. Um, And I feel like the James Franco meme where he's standing on the plank on the boat with the noose around his neck going up first time when he's talking about the crater he dug himself. <laughs> yep. Like I said, I'm down 2400 for the season so far. So I'm going to get it back in one felt calculated swoop. My bet being worth this week a whopping plus 2434. Oh, okay. or, I'm sorry, 2432, which would put me up 32 whole dollars should it hit. And it is nothing more. Then a very simple six-leg parlay to get it done. <laughs> Arsenal over Everton uh, and Arsenal over Bournemouth. I take both of those. Respectfully, of mm-hmm. course. City over Newcastle because I think Newcastle is going to be disappointed after their FA Cup or uh, 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 Carabao Cup loss. Mm-hmm. I just short circuited there for a second. Sorry, guys. I had a little Taylor. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> <laughs> I still feel so bad saying some of that stuff. Oh. Maybe you need to change your batteries. I know. My Duracells are kicking off. <laughs> if uh, And then, God bless it. If um, 
Thank God Leonidas wasn't around. <laughs> All I need to do is uh, have City beat Newcastle because I think Newcastle is going to be a bit disappointed. And there's nobody really in that squad besides Kieran Trippier who's ever been a part of a major final, like a major disappointment besides Loris Carius, who went into hiding for two fucking years. Get it so, the fuck together, Sam. They're not going to get it together, yeah. uh, is my point. And City's going to hurt them very badly. Uh, you get the bet done. You break it down every leg of it for us. Brighton's going to beat West Ham because we West go. Ham just blew their load. Tottenham's going to beat Wolves because why not? And then Leicester, that's actually the one I'm most worried about. Uh, Leicester to beat Southampton because I don't think Southampton's got it. Very good. Plus 2432. I'll be in the positive and very much ahead of all of you boys. All right. Well, you know what I'm a little bit concerned about? Chicken been on a bad run lately. Yes. <laughs> Even the bird can't pick winners, and she's lost her fifth in a row and sits at 10 and 13. Oh, not good. Now, boys, if you would have bet that Kitty flew the coop, then you would have had a bet for once, or in Graham's case, at all. <laughs> That's a very awkward sentence. Yeah. Sorry. I'll keep it going. Why is that funny, Graham? Can you explain the joke to me? Just read the fucking bet, man. <laughs> Or say it with autogram. <laughs> Read, bitch! <laughs> so Kitty left an autogram claiming she had, quote, financial <laughs> arrangements to address and would be back soon. She's also picking Arsenal to beat Bournemouth this weekend. And uh, I'm sure if she could talk, she would also want me to tell you all to please gamble illegally and responsibly. Championship corner! I'm falling. And I can't get up. Oh, no. I'm having difficulty because I've been doing so many different sports leagues because of the betting this week. Uh-huh. Uh, the championship fell out of my favorites. Oh, no shit. On ESPN. <laughs> so, let's go back to Tuesday. Blackburn beat Blackpool 1-0. Uh, Millwall tied Burnley 1-1. And then you had Norwich uh, beating up Birmingham. Um... Actually, was that the game? No, it was not. It was the weekend. Arsenal Loney Marquinhos had a hat trick in oh. uh, for Norwich this weekend in his debut. Wow. Uh, I believe. Uh, Rotherham 2-1 over Sunderland, scoring 33% more of the goals uh, uh, of the goals that Chelsea have since November 6th. <laughs> At that point in time, Stoke City 3-1 over Swansea on Saturday. You had Coventry 2-1 over Sunderland. Luton 1-0 over Birmingham. Bristol City beat out Hull 1-0. And I'm sure a <sighs> barn burner of a match. Burnley 4-0 over Huddersfield. Norwich. No, I thought he had a hat trick. I don't know what's happening right now. I, there's fake news all over the place. Be careful, everybody. <laughs> Norwich 2-0 over Cardiff. Somebody said he had a hat trick in his debut, and he didn't score midweek, and he only had one at the weekend. There's someone you don't believe in the truthfulness of uh, their news telling. Fire Please. Hawk. It's Firehawk. Firehawk did it. He said, he said hat trick in his caption when he shared the story. Please tell them with an autogram. Tell uh, the truth, bitch! <laughs> in <laughs> scintillating National League action, Christian wants you all to know that Wrexham beat the dorking Wanderers. Mm -hmm. uh, Why does he dorks? have against the Wanderers that he's calling them dorks? I know. That's kind of mean. It, again, it bears worth repeating. This just reminds me of the movie Johnny Dangerously. This is fucking war. Every time I hear dorking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, fucking no, wanderers. No one l listens to this is old enough to know what you're talking about. Nope. Uh, Preston beating Wigan 2-1. to one. Blackburn 3-1 over QPR. Reading 3-1 over Blackpool. Sheffield United getting a win 1-0 over Watford. Uh, Millwall 1-0 over Stoke City. Uh in the most Brexit derby ever. <laughs> <laughs> West Brom 2-0 over Boro, uh, continuing their Steve Bruce freedom. Uh, and Swansea 1-1 with Rotherham on Monday. That leaves your table looking like this. You've got Burnley up top on 34 games played with 76 <laughs> points and a plus 40 goal differential. Holy hell. Sheffield United plus 25 goal differential in 33 games played with a 64 point total. Middlesbrough up 57 points plus 16 on 34 games played. Blackburn 34 games played. Dead even goal differential in the 55 points on the board. 
Millwall, 33 games played, but 53 points on the board. So if they win that game in hand, they can move up into fourth and get a little bit of a more favorable wow. seating in the playoff hunt. Um, you also have Luton Town on 33 points uh, because Nathan Jones uh, laid the foundation. Uh, <laughs> plus eight goal differential, same as Millwall, actually, and 53 points on the board as well. Uh, Norwich City in seventh. They've fallen a bit. 34 games played, so the teams in front of them, uh, both of them both ha uh, have games. Both of them both have games in hand. Uh, they are sitting on 52 points. Watford, 34 games played on 50 points. Sunderland, 34 games played on 49. West Brom, 33 games played on 48, so they can jump up into eighth, just outside of the playoff places uh, with Norwich there. Um, it's going to be down to the wire because you also have Coventry with the game in hand on 48 points. And Preston North End with a game in hand on 45 points, although their goal differential is absolute fucking trash at minus eight. You got another bottom of the table. You got Wigan in 24th place, 31 points. They do have a game in hand over Blackpool, and they are tied on points. Huddersfield Town uh, also have a game in hand on Blackpool. All three clubs are on 31 points. Huddersfield with a better goal differential, though. And Neil Warnock's in charge now. Yeah, exactly. The Warlock will fix everything. They're getting fucking out of it, aren't they? Minus 17 goal differential. Blackpool's minus 18. Wiggins minus 22. They're all chasing Cardiff, and they're all four points behind Cardiff. But Cardiff have play, played a maximum of 34 games. They're on 35 points, just outside the drop zone in 21st. Rotherham in 20th with 37 points. Minus nine goal differential, and that could come into play at the end of the season, of actually having a much better goal difference than the teams below them. But they are on a maximum of 34 games as well. Birmingham and QPR not out of it. Birmingham on 38 points. QPR on 39 points. Both of them also have 34 games played, but their goal difference is much, much better than those at the bottom. Worth, oh, that's a lot of shit. Worth, worth <laughs> noting that really the only kind of guarantee we would say is it looks like Burnley's going to end up getting promotion. Yes. In all likelihood, winning the championship as well. They were, what, what did I say, 12 points <clears throat> above? Yeah, 12, plus, 12 points above, but Sheffield United have a game in hand. fucking so. 40. How unfucking Burnley of them. Correct. Vincent Company has them scoring for fun. So I think it's more Craig Bellamy, but yeah. more, more, um, Worst case scenario is what I was trying to say. They'll only be nine points ahead at the top of the league if uh, if Blackburn win their and not Blackburn. Who's the other one? What Sheffield I United. Sheffield United second. win their game in hand. At worst case scenario, they'll be nine points ahead with a plus fifteen goal differential. Looking forward to talking to our boy Brett uh, over the summer yes. when they get promoted. That'll be great and more exciting. We won't be able to take the piss out of them so much now. Yeah, I'd be like, well, you're cheating. We're fucking good in the championship. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> what, to tell us about the changes that were made. Fuck. Pretty much. Yeah, absolutely the case. Well, that's going to wrap it up, boys and girls. Sammy, any parting words? Not really. Most of the... Nobody was really dickheads this weekend, and nobody also did anything good. It was just kind of regular. How about you say it with an autogram? Good job, everybody. Stay easy. <laughs> Very good. Cole, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great time. Yes, I did. Thank you so uh, you much. You weren't for ready for me to talk to you again, I wasn't. were you? I was normally like, oh, when I say, they're closing out. They're not going to talk to me. So normally when I say goodbye, muted, I, I, I say you know, goodbye to people. I'm a girl. You're one of the people I say goodbye to. So, you know. <laughs> time out. I Graham's the one words. that's going to mansplain you. I got closing words. <laughs> and here it comes in three, two, one. Don't act like we control the buttons. The woman muted you, not mm -hmm. us. I never muted her once. We've been listening to her lap this oh, entire time. Oh, so she just time. straight lied to the customers. Yep. Why did I say that? <laughs> Listeners. <laughs> what? I know. Only about 14 of them pay for it. Do better. Uh, customers. Thank if you they know. wanted to be customers and they wanted to check up next up, that's injury time, where we talk about the beers that we were drinking. We check in our adopted clubs, fantasy, and then go ahead and preview the entire weekend's action of the Premier League. Mr. Graham, how would they go about doing that? It's really easy. <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash Steve Fumble Show. Five bucks. Give it to me. <laughs> oh, my God. I think saying it with an autogram is the best way to say it. So with that, everybody, till next week. Just DM me. It'll be five bucks. I'll send to me to personally DM me five bucks. And I will send whatever message you want to any loved one you want. <laughs> autograms. Hashtag autograms. Bye, everybody. Good night. Good night. Born in the land of Bowie, Maryland. Bred to be a fan of fucking Everton. Punch you in the eye 
Cedric Uri, Sam Houston, Sam Houston, Arsenal fans have another Sam, Ray K.A. the fucking Gooner Graham, Smoke of a Lord, the straight and short, Sam Grammy.